Dragon's Dogma 2 is a bit of a two-faced game. On the one hand, it's a technically advanced title that is often quite stunning, packing some of the best lighting I've seen this generation. But it's saddled with performance woes and configuration issues, producing an at times unsatisfactory experience on both PC and console platforms. Thankfully, developer Capcom has been quick to deploy the game's first patch on consoles, which promises fixes for the game's variable frame rate and always on motion blur, alongside a toggle to disable its ray tracing effects entirely. So do these changes produce a better running version of Capcom's RPG Epic? And are there any unexpected improvements under the hood? There are a surprising amount of changes in the first Dragon's Dogma patch, so we'll take a deep dive into the Series X build first before circling back to the other versions of the game. I think the most interesting addition in this new patch is the ability to turn off the game's RTGI, which normally fills in the secondary effects of light on Series X and PS5. When we disable it here, we get a markedly different lighting presentation. To be fair, some shots look similar enough, like this harshly lit morning exterior. But most of the time, the RTGI nicely fills in shade and adds bounce lighting that ends up being quite crucial to the way the image comes together. With the light pouring in from above here, notice how natural this shot looks, the light bouncing softly off the stonework and producing beautiful lighting fall off. We get the same natural bounce in a range of outdoor shots, where the RTGI enhanced default version of the game produces a much more pleasing shot. The new non-RT view gets SSAO and some form of GI it seems, but it's a far cry from what we can achieve with ray tracing. We get much more natural light occlusion as well. The underside of this roof shows off a smooth gradient of dark tones, while the non-RT view looks harsh and artificial. This becomes especially obvious indoors where each piece of furniture blocks light in a much more convincing way than we see in the non-RT view. Because of the complex geometric arrangements in these interior spaces, the RTGI often produces a much more pleasing image here, with the limits of SSAO laid bare. So overall, it's not exactly a welcome change. We're essentially getting the Series S feature set on Series X console hardware, and the results aren't flattering, but performance expectedly gets a substantial boost. In this shot, we go from 49 FPS to a perfectly flat 60 FPS, a major improvement. In the prison cells here, we're about 7 FPS ahead, and while walking through these fields, we're about 7 to 9 FPS ahead or so. While traversing this path at times, we're a full 10 FPS ahead without ray tracing. It's a big boost. The ray tracing difference is most obvious in these more naturalistic shots, when the system is more GPU limited and calculating ray traced lighting is a bit of a struggle. But in the game's city environments, we also see a performance uplift, albeit a much smaller one. RTGI has a substantial CPU impact and I think we're seeing that difference here. I do wish Capcom had gone further. A cutback resolution target paired with killing off RTGI might be enough to hit 60 FPS in the woods and other less dense environments. But as it stands, this seems like a decent option if you're willing to stomach the visual cutbacks, which are fairly obvious. On the performance front, Capcom has also introduced an option to cap the game at 30 FPS. This sort of works as expected, with a flat 30 FPS reading, except when the game is under heavy strain. But the frame times are a bit of a mess, with a mix of 16 and 50 millisecond frames sprinkled throughout. It's highly annoying and renders this mode not especially useful, with no frame time relief for those on conventionally refreshed displays. If we take an excursion into the city, we see somewhat similar results, albeit with plenty of genuine frame rate stumbles in the mix as well. It arguably feels slightly more stable here than the game running fully unlocked, but it's really not much of an improvement. We need to get a genuine 30 FPS lock here, I think, as the results right now just aren't good enough. We also have the option to disable the game's motion blur. I actually quite like the game's motion blur, so this toggle isn't for me, but if you prefer a sharper presentation, that option is available. Side-by-sides reveal that the motion blur does a fair bit to smooth out its otherwise juttery appearance, so I'd suggest keeping it on as well. 
Finally, I wanted to close with a quick checkup on the game's default graphics configuration, with a variable frame rate, motion blur, and ray tracing. Visually speaking, it's the same experience we had before as far as I can tell. The game looks identical in the shots I tested, aside from the time of day, which can be challenging to match exactly. That means the checkerboarding issue we discovered on Series X, with the game resolving a lot of checkerboard artifacts in the final resolve, is still present, unfortunately, as of the latest patch. In performance terms, it's close to an exact match, with little to differentiate it from the launch code. I don't think we've seen a substantial enhancement here, at least on Series X. With Series X out of the way, let's take a look at PS5. Visually speaking, we're mostly in line with the Series console here. But weirdly, it seems like ambient occlusion isn't presenting properly when we turn ray tracing off. Compared to the Series X release, the PS5 looks relatively bereft of shadow here, which produces some unsatisfying results. Sometimes the difference is mild, but at other times it can be quite stark. But PS5 manages to resolve a fairly clean checkerboarded image, making image quality far superior on Sony's console. And the game with ray tracing is unaffected, with both consoles producing similar results. Performance follows the same rough pattern as Series X. Frame rates without ray tracing enabled continue to be noticeably higher than with the effect on which is noticeable both in areas of heavy GPU and CPU stress, but performance continues to lag behind Series X in GPU bound shots, with the Series X's wider GPU good for about an extra 10% in performance over the Sony machine. With RT on, performance relative to the previous patch is almost identical for the most part, clocking in with similar frame rates and matching shots. But in this run of the city, we do score a slight performance win, which I was able to replicate across a few runs. It's not possible to get a perfect like-for-like -like run here, but I suspect the PS5 may be running ever so slightly faster as of the most recent update. The motion blur toggle on PS5 functions about the same as on Series X, and I'd recommend keeping it on. The 30fps lock option also functions the same as Series X, that is to say not very well, with an inconsistent pattern of frame delivery. The PS5 code still doesn't support 120Hz with low frame rate compensation when 120Hz output is enabled in the system settings, so there's no way to get the game to deliver a truly consistent frame rate on PS5 at the moment. Let's move on to Series S. There's no RT in effect here, so we don't get a ray tracing toggle in the game settings at all. Performance versus the prior patch is a little inconsistent, actually showing lower results in this opening shot, but proving a near match for the prior version later on. It's generally about the same as before, I'd say. But while I was compiling these shots, I did notice that the same ambient occlusion difference we observed between PS5 and Series X is also present on the S. Series X is clearly operating with a better ambient occlusion setting with ray tracing turned off relative to the other two machines. A concession like that would make sense for the Series S but would be more curious for the PS5, so perhaps that doesn't reflect the developer's intended behavior. The rest comes in about as expected. The motion blur toggle is here as well, and the 30 FPS cap is present but doesn't function properly. I'm not super happy with the Series S version overall because of the lack of RTGI and much lower shadow resolution, which combine to make the lighting look a lot worse than the premium consoles. Given the hardware, it might be tough to make up much ground here, but I at least think Capcom should probably consider cutting back rendering resolution to improve shadows and perhaps add in higher quality ambient occlusion. The checkerboarding is broken here anyways, just like on Series X, so targeting higher resolutions feels like a bit of a waste. As a final aside here, Alex took a quick look at the PC version and found that it performed slightly better as of the most recent patch, with a 7% improvement in CPU bound performance over the course of this city run and a noticeably cleaner frame time readout. Again, there are some little performance deltas here and there that suggest there could be some small changes under the hood for this patch. I initially suspected that the NPC draw might have been moved in even closer in Dragon's Dogma 2. But I think the draw in is about the same as before. It's hard to tell for sure because the game doesn't seem to have a fixed distance from the player where NPC draw occurs. So it's even possible to bump into invisible NPCs if you sprint throughout the city. Dragon's Dogma 2 has been improved substantially by its first patch. 
we get a range of visual toggles to help shape the game experience, plus the addition of key quality of life changes, like the ability to start a new game. That's a very curious omission that I overlooked during the launch period, because I assume there must have been some way to restart buried in the game somewhere. But I think the game still does come saddled with a few key issues that should be resolved. The image reconstruction on series S and X is broken. The 30 FPS frame rate cap is poorly implemented. The ambient occlusion differences on PS5 should be addressed. The series S's lighting quality should be improved. The PS5 should use low frame rate compensation when using VRR with 120 Hz enabled. A true 60 FPS targeting mode on consoles would be appreciated. And CPU bound performance in cities should be improved. I think most players will probably be most interested in the last item there given how poorly this game can run in city environments, but I think all of them should be resolved if possible. There's a worrying trend with Capcom games where they often just don't come configured quite how I'd like on console platforms. Last year's Resident Evil 4 was emblematic of this launching with noticeable image quality and performance woes. Many of that title's issues were on the minor side, but in aggregate they created a less polished experience than many players had expected. Dragon's Dogma 2 is much the same, launching with a slightly bizarre graphical configuration that seems designed to please very few console players. There isn't really a mode or version of the game that I can confidently recommend at the moment. The Series X with 120Hz output and VRR enabled would come closest, but you'd still have to contend with the poor checkerboarding in that case. Pile on the game's performance issues in densely populated areas, which afflict all platforms, and it hasn't been a perfect launch. Still, this patch brings us closer to that ideal, especially if the 30 FPS cap can be sorted out. I hope this is the first in a succession of patches that will ultimately give us a truly polished version of Capcom's RPG epic. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfinder.net for exclusive and early access content and to get in touch use social media. Thanks for watching.